songs. I'd like to say uh, good morning to all the sisters and brothers here in Baltimore. Good morning. My brother Thin again, reading for me today, it's your brother John. Uh, it's been a long, long, long day, so excuse me, people. Before we get into the lesson, we're going to deal with some stuff. You know, because a lot of people need to understand it's just like how we came to church and we got up this morning, got ourselves ready, got dressed, and we put on our attire. Now, we, we take time out to see how we present ourselves before people, right? Sometimes we like certain garments we like to put on our body. We even keep it up a certain way, right? We just don't throw it down when we go to the house. Fold it back up, put it back away a certain way, right? Yeah. And so we treat it a certain type of way. We wash it and whatever it say, wash it. We prepare it in whatever way the Lord, you know, whatever way you think you should prepare yourself. You know, for the young, young sisters and brothers, you know, we like the high fashion. You know, Polo, Ralph Lauren, Louis, hmm. Gucci. You know, I don't know what they do down here in Baltimore. I'm just telling you what they like up there in Chicago. Okay, there we go. You know, and everybody like what they like. When you come in the house, you like your house dressed a certain way. You like your cars a certain way. We take time to do these things, right? And we got to keep the maintenance up on these things, right? But everything comes with a price. Am I correct? Yeah. And the reason why I say this and I compare this to like, I got a humming. I compare this to like uh, clothing is because the title of today's lesson is called Put on Christ and Walk with Me. Put on Christ and Walk with Me. And I'm going to tell you something. When you put Christ on, <laughs> it's a good thing when you put them on. But you got to handle them a certain type of way. You know, handle with care. You know, got to wash them in cold water. Amen. You know, well, sometimes when you put them on, when you put the pants bottom part on, you got to dry clean only. Extra starch. <laughs> you know? He can't, you just can't toss him around. You got to polish him up. He got to look good every time you put him on. It's just like everybody pulled up in some nice, beautiful vehicles. And you just don't handle it in your own kind of way. I don't even want to park it everywhere. <laughs> I want that valet. I'm all on the wheels. Beautiful rims. I want a nice, Sound system. I want people to know when I approach. <laughs> we do that, right? The same thing when you put on Christ. You start to get certain attributes that when you put Christ on, what you start to take. You start to take on a certain form. You know? You're dealing with the most high God. The most you can go, the highest you can get. You just can't do and say anything you want when you put him on. It take you over. You start to watch what you say. You and you catch yourself. <laughs> you know what I mean? Man, just put it down, man. That's all I ask. You know? You don't let yourself just be out there reckless. You know? It's a certain aura you have. See, the Jesus got swag, too, for the young people. You know? When he steps to the left, you step to the left. When he fall back, you fall back. If he being abrasive, you be a little abrasive. We're going to show you all that. We're going to show you all that. And if this thing ain't pretty good, we're just going to shut this down. And I can, my, my, my voice can project to the back. <laughs> Because this humming killing me. <laughs> killing me too. 
But we want to put Christ on. And when you put Christ on, you're walking with him. But it's certain stipulations. See, if I'm going to ride in your car and I'm being with you and we hang out, it's certain things we agree on. We just don't do our own thing. We agree on something. Hey, man, if something jump off, you run, I'm running. Okay. <laughs> hey, man, we get into it with these guys. You got my back? Yeah, I got your back. No, I ain't got your back. I got your bags. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> but I'm just saying, that's how we coming. I'm just letting you know. I'm just painting a picture for you. Let's get into this lesson. Let's go to Romans 13. Romans the 13th chapter. You know, I'm going to cut this off, man. Can everybody hear me in the back? You need it for me? Okay, you got to fix something. Then don't you just be doing stuff on me, man. <laughs> fix it, you know. You're you going to get somebody hearing aid problem. Romans 13. Right? Romans 13. Romans 13, to pick it up at verse 14. When you get that, brother, go ahead and read. But put ye on the Lord Jesus Christ, uh -huh. and make not provision for the flesh to fulfill the lust thereof. What he's saying, put on Christ and don't make provision for what you want to do and how you want to fulfill it. We got lust. We lust after things. It don't necessarily be lusting after somebody, but it's things out here that we want in the world that we lust after. He said, don't make no provision for what your flesh want when you put Christ on. So now, if you put Christ on, how do you put him on? Because Christ ain't here with us, right? So how do you put on Christ? That's what we need to ask ourselves. How do you put Christ on? Let's go. 1 Timothy 3. We're going to, Galatians 3, I'm sorry. We're going to walk ourselves down through this. We're going to take our time, and we're going to learn some stuff today. Amen. Galatians, the third chapter. Because we want to find out, how do you put on Christ? I don't know how to put Christ on. What? Do you, how do you put him on? What? Proverbs 3. Galatians. I mean, <laughs> listen, I'm tired. People don't hurt me. I just, just got to look. I just got to, I had to sit on a cramped plane, you know yeah. what I mean? I'm not complaining, though, because I love this. We just been running, that's all. I'm running on, I'm running on fumes, so don't hurt me. Galatians 3. I'm glad y'all paying attention. Pick it up at verse 27. When you get that, brother, go ahead and read. For as many of you as have been baptized into Christ. Have been what? Baptized, baptized. into Christ. What happened? Have put on Christ. You put on Christ. So let me ask, let me tell you something. If you're not ready to put Christ on, don't get baptized. But it's a catch to it. You got to be baptized in order to get eternal life. To even to get into the program. See, that's the, that's the criteria of the program. To be baptized, you got to put his arm on. See, when you're rolling with Christ, I don't want you in your clothes. You wear what I want you to wear. And what he wears, top of the line. It's better than Armani. Amen. <laughs> you hear me? Amen. Louis ain't got nothing on this. <laughs> Trust me when I tell you that. <laughs> but you're going to look good. And people are going to love you. And I'm going to show you why they're going to start to love you. Because you're going to take on a whole different person. You don't take on yourself when you get in there. I'm telling you. Don't go to sleep on me. I'm not telling you. I'm telling you. <laughs> so we put on Christ once we got baptized. Because see, once you go in the water, you go in one person, but you're putting them on so you come out a different person. You see that? That's the baptism. When I dip you in, you went in, that old person, you come out a new being. That's why you get your, your, your slate wiped clean. You know how you clean up your credit? You get another chance, that's what happens when you go into the water and you come out. I'm giving you a clean slate. I'm wiping your record clean. You know? You had big felonies. You know? You had three strikes. You was glad to see that. 
See? Let's keep it going. 1 Timothy 3. Because this is a mystery to everybody. 1 Timothy 3. 1 Timothy, the third chapter. Pick it up at verse 16. 1 Timothy 3 and 16. Now, we know we just put them on, right? Now, what happened when you put on this new garment? Feel good, right? Smell good, right? It's looking good, too. It's just like you just came out of a beauty salon or a barber shop. You know, that, you, you got a fresh haircut. You look good, don't you? Clean. Man, super. Go ahead, 1 Timothy 3 and 16. Pick it up. And without controversy, uh -huh. great is the mystery of godliness. See, this is a mystery of godliness. Pay attention. Go ahead. God was manifest in the flesh. Now, God was manifested in the flesh. Now, did we see God manifested in the flesh? We weren't born in them days, was we? Or was we? Read. Justified in the spirit. He was manifested in the flesh. Justified in the spirit. Go ahead. Seen of angels. Yes, sir. Preached unto the Gentiles. Yeah, he was. Go ahead. Believed on in the world. Believed on in the what? World. Go ahead. Received up into glory. Now these attributes you're going to take on. Now you ain't going to heaven. Because <laughs> the Lord going to come to you. Okay? So don't go and run, go and tell Brother Boy, Brother Dan. He, he said you're going up to glory. <laughs> I ain't telling you that. <laughs> but what I am telling you is when you put on Christ, he is manifested in you. Now he brought back to life in your life. Manifest means to be brought forth, right? Yes, sir. When you put him on, he brought forth in you. Even though you haven't lived to see him in, in his glory yet. But you have. When you, I'm going to show you have. I'm going to show you exactly how you have. How you put him on, how is he manifested in you? I'm going to show you all that. You know, brother, then how is that possible? Slow down. Let me show you. Amos 3. Now, when you put them on, there are certain things you got to be in agreement with. You got to sign the dollar line. Now, let me ask you something. How many people want to put on Christ? Okay. Y'all want to walk with him? Now, I ain't tell you to shake your, raise your hand. I just threw a question out there. So y'all just signed the contract. Okay. I'm letting you know. That was a setup. <laughs> for you to sign this contract. So ain't no going back. <laughs> Amos 3, man. Amos 3. Now you heard it, right, Brother John? Yes, sir. Okay. You my witness, right? Amen. <laughs> See, they putting on the garment, and they ain't even look at the price. <laughs> <laughs> now they charged it to you. Too late. Mm. You supposed to have checked the price tag. <laughs> you didn't know it was so much a month. <laughs> <laughs> it's a residual payment yeah. on this. Interest. Yeah. <laughs> you got to check that tag, man. You see, you walked in the department store, and it didn't have a tag on the clothing. See? That's what you forgot. And you know when you walk in a place and you don't see no tag, you already know what the, it's, 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 it's telling you something, right? It's expensive. And if you got to ask, you can't afford it. Mm -hmm. That's what happened, man. Christ, hey, man, that's expensive, man. Because he requires a lot of stuff. But if you put him on, he, he got a payment plan how you can pay it off. <laughs> he gave you a payment plan. <laughs> Amos 3, pick it up at verse 3. Go ahead and read. Can two walk together except they be agreed? Now, you got to agree to the contract. You got to agree to keep the laws of God, Okay. When you put them on, you got to agree to the terms. You're going to wash it in cold water. No chlorine bleach. Tumble dry. Cool iron. No starch. That's the agreement, right? Now, y'all already said it before I even read the terms that y'all was going to do it. So you agree, you're going to keep the commandments, right? Mm -hmm. Finish that scripture. That's all we have. That's it? Three. Yes, sir. So now he said, can two walk together except you agree? Right? So let's see the terms of the contract. 
Now you agreed to it, but they already agreed to it, right? They said they're going to do it, right? Mm -hmm. See, that's what happened. I always run in your mouth before you hear it. <laughs> Deuteronomy 10. Deuteronomy 10, let's see the requirements. Now, what I'm about to read goes for the whole world. You follow me? Deuteronomy 10. Pick it up at verse 12. Now keep in mind, Israel is the Lord's name. Right? So now, when you put him on, you take over his name, right? His identity, right? Right? See, y'all thought identity theft was something new. <laughs> no, everybody in here got a different identity. Right? My name, Brother Thin. Then I got a nickname. Then I got a last name. Then I got a middle name. I got a lot of identities out here. Facebook, I'm something totally different. Instagram, I'm something different. Mm. You know? We got a lot of identities out here. So when you put on Christ, the name of his brand is Israel. Okay? So whoever put him on, that's the brand. See, so y'all thought, because he named y'all Israel, that that was something y'all just got by yourself. No, that's the Lord's name. Mm. I'm giving you the deepness of it. And whoever put him on, that's the name of the product that they wear. Like when you put on Armani suits. That's the name of who garments you wear. You follow me? So when you put on Christ, what's the name of the garment? Israel. It's not an individual person's name. That's God's name. I'm giving you the deepness of it. Go ahead and read the terms of, the, of this garment, man. 10 and pick it up at verse 12. Go ahead. And now, Israel, what, uh -huh. what doth the Lord thy God require of thee? What did the Lord require of you if you're going to put him on? Go ahead. But to fear the Lord First thy God. First thing you got to do is to fear him. Go ahead. To walk in all his ways. You got to walk in all, not some of his ways, right? Did it say some? It said all. A little bit. All. Just a, just a tad. All. All his ways. Read. And to love him. To hate him. To love him. To love him. Love him. Go ahead. And to serve the Lord thy God with all thy heart. And with all thy soul. With just soul. some of your heart. With all thy heart. And with none of your soul. With all thy soul. See, you got to be ready to put in some work. You got to work. I'm putting you out here. It's just like these guys that hustle out in the streets. You got to put in that work, all right? Y'all know how it is? We got to come here. We got to be here early to set up. You got to be here. Ain't no time for playing. We got to set this room up, right? That's right. We need people to help set it up. Who going to do it? That's the terms you agree with. I don't have the luxury to say, no, I agree with the terms. So I got to do a lesson last night from Friday night, get on a plane, come here and, be, and teach the brothers and sisters that want to hear it this morning. That's what you agreed to. If I'm an usher, I got to break down and set up. That's what I agree to. I'm a servant. I serve people. You got to be ready for that. But the payment is great. You get, hey, the Lord pay good. <laughs> Trust me. Man, he keep you, he keep you padded. <laughs> I'm telling you. Trust me when I tell you that. He have you looking good. Go ahead and finish it to the 13. To keep the commandments of the Lord. Got to keep them. And his statutes. Yep. Which I command thee this day for thy good. For your good. Now, when you put me on, this is for your good. Now, when you put him on, that means he protecting you, right? Yep. There's a lot of things when you put on Christ that come with it. Now, I ain't give you all the parameters of when you're putting on this clothing. It'll do some fancy stuff for you. It give you if, if, you was, if you was a nobody in the world, it'd make you somebody. You know? If you was a, 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 if you was, if you didn't have any status, it give you status. 
See, when you are serving a God, you are seen whether you want to be seen or not. You become the center of attention even when you don't want it. Because that's how God rolls. Everybody know Jesus. Whether you teaching them right or wrong, they know about him. The whole world. That's why when you doing right, people notice it, even if you didn't open up your mouth. Right. You become, I was watching you. Mm. They watch you. They seeing how you walk. They like how you move. Who we at? That was the end of 13. Go to Genesis 5 and 2. Genesis the fifth chapter. Now I'm going to show you something. This is one thing you got to remember. You're not the first person to start walking with God. The Lord always got example of people that started walking with him way before you came into the world. Because the Lord don't like to walk alone. You know, you ever notice you always like somebody to walk with you? Mm -hmm. Come walk with me to the store. <laughs> <laughs> you know, and when you're hanging out, you want somebody to hang with you. You don't like to hang alone. Unless you want some foolishness. <laughs> but then you still want somebody to hang with you. Right. Genesis 5. Let's see the first person start walking with God. Genesis 5. Pick it up at verse 22. Genesis 5 and 22. When you get that, brother, go ahead and read. And Enoch walked with God. Who walked with God? Enoch. Enoch walked with God. Go ahead. After he begat Methuselah 300 years. Now, after he begat his sons, Methuselah, he said, man, I'm going to go walk with God. How long did he walk with him? 300 years. So why is it hard to get here on the Sabbath day? Mm. He dealt with it 300 years. Not 365 days in a year. 300 years. And you tripping about one day out the week? It's one day we get up here and we got to hustle. It's one day the Lord asks to set aside for him. One day. How long? How many? I have to read that how many years again? 300 years. Mm. So when people started complaining or acting like the, the Sabbath day is a burden, you read that to them. I ain't never walked with nobody that long. I ain't never lived that long yet. <laughs> So I don't complain, you know. That he been rolling with Enoch for a minute, huh? For a minute. That's his road dog. <laughs> it's my man. That's my guy. I roll with him. See, we we, we y'all we laugh, but this is where these terms come from. I'm pointing them out. So when you see Jesus, you see Enoch rolling up with him because they're walking together. Man, he always with you. That's my, that's my guy. He going to be with me until he out the game. Because <laughs> Jesus lived forever, but he rolling with me for now for a long time, you know. Because the Lord don't like to be alone. He like people to walk with him. But when you walk with me, hey, you walk the way I walk. Don't walk in front of me. Don't walk behind. You can walk behind me. But you better not be stepping up on my heels. <laughs> so watch. Hmm. If I duck, you duck. Let's see who else walked with God. Let's go over to that. the sixth. I get, I got. No, that's it. Just okay. one verse, brother. We ain't giving them nothing else. I ain't finish it, though. You ain't finish it? Go on, finish that 22. And begat sons and daughters. Oh, that's it? That's it. Okay, I thought it was something else. <laughs> <laughs> Six and nine, man. I thought it was something big. No. <laughs> sons and daughters. Okay, I guess it was. We ain't going to leave them out. So, let's see who else walked with God. Six and nine. Genesis 6 and nine. Just right on over. Go ahead and read. These are the generations of Noah. These are the generations of Noah. Go ahead. Noah was a just man and perfect in his generations. Now, in the generation that Noah lived in, he was a just and a perfect man. See, this is the generation we living in. We living in the Trump administration era. 
you know. <laughs> I, I'm, just, I'm just giving you a timeline, so I just brought up the president. That's in our timeline, you know. You probably was in a, the, the, the Reagan era, yeah. <laughs> you know. But in Noah's generation, he did what? He was a just man and perfect in his generation. He was just and he was a good guy. Okay, and go ahead and read. And Noah walked with God. And Noah walked with God. See, there's a lot of people that like to hang out and walk with God. What's, what's so good about walking with God? Mm -hmm. We're going to get into that. See, walking with God is something good. It is. Now, I'm going to tell y'all, sometimes he may walk down somewhere that may look dark and, and scary, but that's all right. Don't get scared. Just keep walking with me. I got you. Ain't nobody going to touch you. You ever be around certain people, you know when they come around, you feel safe? <laughs> when they come around, you feel safe now. Nah, well, I can go, I can have fun now. Nah. Uh, we, we had people like that. When they come into the party, you ain't safe in this party. But as soon as you see my man hit the dope, you good. <laughs> <laughs> you, can, you can lay your head down and relax a little bit. Because ain't nothing going to jump off now. Nah. <laughs> And that's how Jesus is. He got you. Let's keep it moving. Matthew 4. Because now we, we know that uh, uh, Enoch and Noah walk with God. But see, Lord like a lot of people to walk with him. Matthew 4. He going to pick up a lot of people on his way. And we're going to find some things out as we picking up people on his walk. Because he walking. See, the Lord is walking through life. Now he walked up on our life. Who want to walk with me? See? See, this is like a timeline. Y'all think timelines just start. It's a timeline. That's why we're going from generation to generation. We're going to walk it all the way up to ours. He walking through life. Some people down. Now he picking up a new group of people to walk with him. Now we are alive. Now it's time for you all to walk. Matthew 4, pick it up at verse 18. Matthew 4, chapter, verse 18. When you get that, brother, go ahead and read. And Jesus, walking by the Sea of Galilee, saw two brethren. They was two brothers, right? Who was they? Simon called Peter uh -huh. and Andrew his brother. They had, they had Peter and his brother, uh, 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 his brother, go ahead. Cast Andrew. It. Casting a net into the sea, for they were fishers. Go ahead. And he saith unto them, follow me and I will make you fishers of men. You do the same way we do. You see two people, hey, 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 hey come on. You don't even say, you don't even say their name. Come, 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 come on with me. Where we, we going? Just come, man. Uh, and you don't say nothing. We had a friend like, hey, just gone. We going to see what he, what he talking about. <laughs> he called Andrew and Peter. Hey, come here. Hey, I want you. Come with me. It's just like our parents, come with me. Our kids, when you say, come here, don't they come here? They don't need an explanation of where they're going. You come follow me. I say, come here. <laughs> I'm just showing y'all some things. Go ahead and read. And they straight away left their nets and followed him. See, the Lord is saying, whatever you do, stop what you're doing and come follow me. See, that's what he do. When he snatch you up, when he call you, whatever you're doing in your life, stop it and come. That's what he's saying. And I'm going to show you something else that he's saying too. Go ahead and read. And going on from thence, he saw other two brethren, James the son of Zebedee and John his brother, in a ship with Zebedee and their father. And they're all brothers. Mending their nets, and he called now them. Now, hold on, these two brothers was with they who? Their father. What was the father's name? Zebedee. Zebedee. <laughs> what they, it was a brother that knew that name was Zebedee. <laughs> I just like that name. I just wanted you to say it again. <laughs> so they with their father, right? And what happened? And mending their nets, and he called them. He called them, and what happened? And they immediately left the ship and their father they and followed him. They left the ship him. and said, Dad, I'm out of here. Catch you. That's letting you know. You got to leave your parents. Mama and them, hey, I got to go. <laughs> Mama, I love you. Right on, Dad. But you got to hit it. You got to serve the Lord. 
this is something. You got to leave your pants behind if they're not on board. Zebedee come like, hold on, can I go with y'all? Did he say that? No. You got to leave the pants alone. They left their parents, they left their father, and they was doing something. They just left everything. And that's how you got to be. That's how you got to be. Now use discretion with that now, people. <laughs> I ain't saying, you know, if your parents take care of you, ain't got no job, you go all the same. <laughs> and don't be silly now. <laughs> don't get silly. Use discretion. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> Better hold on. <laughs> Finish that out. Was that in the 22? Yes, sir. Go to 25. Go ahead. And there followed him great multitudes of people from Galilee. Now, this is great multitudes of people from where? From Galilee. So they from Galilee. So they from Baltimore. Go ahead. And from Decapolis. They from Chicago. Go ahead. And from Jerusalem. They from Dallas. See, these is, this is our walk in our time. So I'm showing you all these people that's walking. When we come here to, in, in, in Baltimore, look at all these people here. That's walking with the Lord. You come to Chicago, even a greater crowd, that's walking with the Lord. You go to Dallas, you go to Houston, you go to L.A., Florida, Canada, Zimbabwe, Australia, United Kingdom. It's a lot of people coming from all. That's why he naming these places. He got a lot of walkers. Mm. They doing a marathon. Sure. <laughs> See, y'all thought marathons just started. They been, the Lord been, he had big people walking in marathon with him. Just making it plain for you, man. Just making it easy for you. You finished that 25? No, sir. Go ahead. And from Judea and from beyond Jordan. And from beyond Jordan, they had people walking with God everywhere. Same thing with what we do now, right? Yes, sir. Say nothing what we do in Israel of God. We're doing something very old. <laughs> Say nothing new. And I'm going to tell you something. The Lord is with us. Because our fame is going out throughout all the world. It may be other people that know about the Lord, but their fame ain't being heard. As far as preaching the gospel. Not your individual fame, the word of God. See what I mean? See the big difference? Yes, sir. We hitting the world. Keep walking with us. Let's keep it moving. Now, what happens when you start walking? Now, you got all this group of people. What's going to happen when you start walking with Christ? I'm about to show you. Go to Psalms 23. Psalms 23. Psalms 23. Stay with me. Stay with me. Psalms 23. I'm starting to get energized now. I'm mm -hmm. about to get into it now. We about to take you somewhere now. Don't go to sleep on me. It's kind of hot up in this joint. He got all these bodies in here, man. <laughs> <laughs> man, we got to walk together. We got to have a little air in here, man. Yes, sir. <laughs> I'm always getting hot. You ever notice that, John? <laughs> Psalms 23, pick it up at verse 1. This is the effects you start to take on. Now watch the characteristics, because you're putting on something good. It's just like, no, nah, I don't need that. <laughs> Thanks. Psalms 23, pick it up at verse 1. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. Because he's your shepherd. What does a shepherd do? Lead the flock. But the flock is following him. They're walking with him. Go ahead. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He maketh you to lie down where it's plentiful and plush. Go ahead. He leadeth me beside the still waters. He leads you beside still waters. It's not chaotic. It shouldn't be chaotic if you're serving the Lord in your life. You may have afflictions, but it shouldn't be chaotic. Read. He restoreth my soul. He restores your soul when you think you're about to give up. Read. He leadeth me in the paths of righteousness. He leads you in the paths of what? Righteousness. Because you're walking with him, so he's leading you. Y'all walking together in the paths of righteousness. 
So if you see people that say they walking with God, they know God, and they pass and in righteousness, who leading you? Who you walking with? Read. For his name's sake. For his what sake? Name's he sake. He told you what his name was. He got a lot of names. But that ultimate name is Jesus. Go ahead. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of yeah, death. Yeah, though I walk through where they shooting and beating folks up and, and a lot of craziness, what happened? I will fear no evil. You shouldn't be fearing no evil. If you're serving a guy, you shouldn't be scared. If you find yourself around some people that's a little bit reckless and his neighborhood is not known for good things, you shouldn't be scared. Now, I'm not saying go walk into a, 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 a shootout and say, I ain't afraid. No, I ain't tell you to do that. You get shot, that's on you. But I'm just saying, if you find yourself in predicaments, don't get scared. Some, of you, some people be scared to drive in certain areas. You in a car. They ain't snatching doors open, snatching people out the cars, are they? They doing that here? Then why y'all be scared to go in certain neighborhoods? <laughs> Don't be spooked like that, man. It's just like I'm on public transportation, right? Now, CTA is rough. You will get beat up on the bus, and they record it and put you on YouTube. <laughs> but, and there's certain bus lines at certain times of the day I wouldn't even want to ride on, but I love it. You want to know why? Because those people love to hear the word. Everybody scared, but all you got to do is just respect people and say, hey, man, that's not cool, man. Be cool. Now, if they're already in it, don't be just jumping in it, just trying to still. <laughs> but you shouldn't fit no evil. Go ahead. For thou art with me. Who with me? Thou art with he me. He with you because you got him on and you walking with him. Go ahead. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort you. He got me. a rod and staff. It comforts you. It's just like security is in the room. <laughs> just like I got that rod and staff. I'm just hitting because that's where guns be at <laughs> on that side. I got, you know, for the young folks, I got that heat. Keep it up. I ain't going to tell you again. I'm going to deal with you. I'm not, gonna, I'm not even going to fight with you. He said the rod. You know, rod will hurt you. And the staff. That's right. You got a double whammy coming at you, huh? Mm -hmm. <laughs> I didn't want to get hit over there with no rod, man. <laughs> Finish to the six. Go ahead. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of mine see, enemies. He prepares things before your enemies. People that don't want to see you rise up, that won't, don't want to see you prosper. He prepared all in front of them. Man, I thought you was going to go down. Oh, I hate you. <laughs> but the Lord got a smooth sailing for you. Man, I, 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 I just knew the guy I had him. But he had you. He got you straight. You thought them shorts was going to get you, didn't you? He was running fast, wasn't you? But the Lord had you. He prepared a way for you. You know, when you, we ran around the corner, you dipped off to the side and kept running. See? Finish to the six. Thou anointest my head with oil. Anointest his head with oil. My cup runneth over. Your cup run over with blessings. And sometime before the Lord, sometime before he give you blessings, he cut he a collection agency too. You got a debt you got to pay. Mm -hmm. Don't get discouraged if you ain't getting no blessings. Because blessings come in many forms. Okay? You don't know, it's not always financial. Some people can't have all, a lot of money in their account. They hurt somebody or hurt themselves, you know, and it don't necessarily have to be a physical hurt. It could be that, you know, they, they hurting themselves by spending up all their money. They can't pay the bills. They trying to buy, you know, a new, a new Cadillac. <laughs> new Lincoln is out. I'm just telling you what they would have. Now, they, they probably try to get Jag, a Jaguar. <laughs> Come on, man. Why are you trying to? Why are you trying to get a jag, man? You know you got to pay all these bills, man. You got all them kids out there, man. You got kids in college, mm -hmm. kids in grammar school, 
kids in the stomach. Man, what you doing, man? <laughs> you, got, you got to get it together, man. Yeah. So sometimes the Lord bless you in a lot of different ways by keeping your health, making sure you eat, making sure you got things. You may not always have what you want, but you got what you need. Amen. You're not out on the street. Ain't nobody beating your door down when you sleep invading your home. Mm. See, people got those problems, but you don't. When you go out, nothing is hurting your family. Lord even protecting you, and because you being righteous, sometimes he put a hedge around your family because of you. So some things that's happening in other people's household ain't happening in yours. It was shooting going on, but you didn't hear it. But you seen it on the news, but you didn't hear it. See? Or you heard it, but it really wasn't nothing. Wasn't for you. Did you finish that to the six? No, I got to get six. Go ahead. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of See, my goodness life. goodness and mercy follows you when you walk with Christ. When you put them on, you got good behind you and mercy. People giving you mercy and they being good to you. The Lord said when your ways please him, he make even your enemies to be at peace. If you got enemies and they're not at peace with you, then your ways don't please the Lord. You're going to always have enemies, but they'll be at peace with you. Finish it. And I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. And I'm going to dwell where he dwell forever. Let's keep it moving. Go to Proverbs 2. Because once you start walking with Christ, don't you stop. Because ain't no discharge in this army. One, I, I'm telling you, once you put them on, you can't take them off. Too late. So when you put this on your body, you don't need no other clothing. You ain't got to change drawers. <laughs> Socks. Pants. Just make you perfect. You ain't got to worry about older because it take care of that too. I'm just telling you what type of garment you got on. <laughs> and it's comfortable. So you ain't got to worry about it being too tight, too loose. It changes so you ain't got to worry about it not looking. It's been looking the same. No, it's, it's going to look beautiful every time they see it. People going to compliment it. No matter if you had it on for, for eons. I mean, you always wearing that. They ain't going to say that. They ain't going to say that with this. Man, when you going to change your clothes? They ain't going to say that. <laughs> Just not going to say it. Proverbs, man. Pick it up at verse 2. Proverbs, uh, second chapter. Pick it up at verse 12. I'm sorry. Proverbs 2 and 12. When you get that, brother, go ahead and read. To deliver thee from the way of the evil man. See, that's what it does. Go ahead. From the man that speaketh forward things. Go ahead. Who leave the paths of uprightness. See, you got people that was walking with Christ, but they left the path of right. What? Of uprightness. To do what? To walk in the ways of darkness. Some people like walking in that darkness. Well, what you talking about, Brother Thin? Well, well, one of the things is when you put this on, it lights up. So everybody is in the room can see you. You can't hide. Okay. I meant to tell you it lights up. So it glows in the dark too. <laughs> you know, even if you get it wet, it's waterproof. <laughs> I'm going to show you that. It was waterproof. You don't have to learn how to swim. Sustain your life all around. I'm telling you, this suit is great. I love this garment. It's, it's awesome. You see what I'm saying? Amen. But it lights up. Nice. Because it wants to let you know since you're walking with it, you got to see everything. So it, it, it illuminates the whole room. Okay? So if you don't like light, you don't want to fool with this. You scared of light? You don't want that. People that like dark, like to live in the dark, like to have a room dim, probably, that's probably what you like to do. <laughs> so don't be, don't be a part of that darkness. People that always like a dog, you better watch them. <laughs> People that always like a dog, you better watch them. Because you do slick stuff in the dark. Mm -hmm. 
Don't they do slick stuff in the dark? That's what they tell me. We all did it. <laughs> Turn the lights out. Click the lights. <laughs> <laughs> <Shh>. <laughs> Finish that to the 13, brother. No, we got it. We got it? We got it. We finished that, right? Yes, sir. So the Lord said, when you start walking with him, don't start walking in the darkness. Don't do that. Don't do that. First John, you want to walk in the light. Why you want to walk in the light? We're going to show you why you need to walk in the light. First John, first chapter. First John, first chapter. Pick it up at verse 5. First John, first chapter. We running through it, people, so don't hurt me if we get out of here early. I'm going to tell John to slow down on that read. Hmm. No, I'm just <laughs> first John 1, pick it up at verse 5. When you get that, brother, go ahead and read. This then is the message which we have heard of him. We heard of him. Go ahead. And declare unto you. We declared you this garment. We, we tell you about it. Go ahead. That God is light. Now, I told you about this garment is light. Go ahead. And in him is no darkness at all. It ain't going to get dark around him. Okay. See, when you put him on, it brings, it puts a whole new transformation on you. We can't teach you everything in one setting, right? It make you even take on physical characteristics. Moses started to shine from him just hanging out with, Mo, with, with the Lord. Faith started to shine and it never stopped until he died. I ain't never had a shining face. Even when I clean it real good, it may get ashy, but they ain't never shine. You know what I'm saying? I'm just saying. A shining face. And you don't even know that you shine. That's deep, ain't it? You give off light and don't even know you're giving off light. It's just like you're walking past a person you ain't put on no deodorant. <laughs> you're offending people and don't even know it. <laughs> Because ain't nobody going to say nothing but you're giving off an odor. Man, what you going to do, man? That ain't right. Sometimes we get used to ourselves. You know, you know, you're hurting somebody else. But you're used to your smell. Just throwing something in there. That ain't even right. Where we at? Beginning of six. Go ahead. If we say that we have fellowship with him. You say you, you, you've got fellowship with who? With the Lord? Go ahead. And walk in darkness. And you walk in what? Darkness. Go ahead. We lie. You lie. And do not the truth. And you ain't doing the truth. You say you walk with Christ. You say you're a servant of Christ. And you don't. And you always walking in dark places. I mean, your walk. People don't see you light up. You're always on something. On some slick, talking slick, doing slick stuff, doing some foolishness. You know, you got what we call them knockoffs. You know, sister's good at that with them purses. Them knockoff purses. Ain't that what they call them? Yep. Yeah, there you go. I know they had them up here in Baltimore. They can't get the real deal. They get that knockoff. So when you got on them knockoff garments, and we got them, just like them Louis belts, them Gucci belts, them, see, I, I got an authentic one at the house. And no disrespect, my brother, my oldest brother, he liked that type of expensive stuff. I do too, don't get me wrong, but I can't always afford it. But I know authentic when I see it, it comes totally different. And they give you lifetime warranty. The belt is thick. The belt is real leather. And, and the, the buckle is thick, and it's made out of pure, what, what, silver or something? They just don't give you no garbage. But them knockoffs is real thin, ain't it? <laughs> Look good, though, but you better not tap against nothing that's going to chip. <laughs> you can't wear it too many times, either. <laughs> See, I'm just showing you, you know? And we have people, we love top-of-the-line stuff, no matter, we got... 
We got, hey, we got champagne taste with Kool-Aid money. <laughs> That's how we roll. We got champagne taste with Kool-Aid money, man. <laughs> I'll just tell you how these people operate, man. So we know about knockoffs. Or what you call knockoff is imitations. Did you finish that? Beginning of seven. Go ahead. But if we walk in the light. But if you walk in the light. As he is in the light. As the Lord is in the light. We have fellowship one with another. You got fellowship one with another. Finish it. And the blood of Jesus Christ, his son, cleanseth us from all sin. And, and you're supposed to be clean. See, with, with this garment, it's white. That got smudges on it. I ain't know it got yours camouflage. I ain't never seen a camouflage one. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? This one, if I ain't got to be camouflaged. I just don't want you to see me. I just disappear. Yours don't do that, man. I don't know what you got. Let me, let me see, you know, read the tag. I ain't never seen that kind. So it's telling you, it's showing you. Go over to the second chapter of 1 John. 1 John, the second chapter. Pick it up at verse 5. 1 John 2 and 5. When you get that, brother, go ahead and read. But whoso keepeth his word, go ahead. in him verily is the love of God perfected. See, when, you, when you keep his word, the love of God becomes perfected in you. Now you know how what the Lord requires you. Now you know how to navigate through the Bible. Now you know how when people come to you and they ask you about this word, how to answer them. It becomes perfected. It don't happen in, overnight. It's a process. But you know the word. See here, you're not going to be deceived. Now you may not come back, but you will know what you know when you leave here. One thing about it, we don't deceive you, so you can't say you didn't know. You can go to any other religion you want, but you can't say you didn't know the truth. Can't stand in front of God and lie. You're going to get the uncut word. Now, what you do with it is on you. You want to go with these radical Israelites? That's cool. <laughs> they knockoffs. <laughs> Just telling you. I ain't talking about them. That's why I ain't saying by name. It's on you. You want to read all these other books that the Lord don't require you to do? That's on you. Study your behind off if you want in them books. But you weren't deceived here. We giving you top of the line, top quality, untainted, unadulterated gospel. Who you at? Middle of fire. Go ahead. Hereby know we that we are in him. He that See, said, we know we're in him when we can talk that word. Because if you put on Christ, you're supposed to be knowing what he's about. You shouldn't be stuttering. You should know this thing like second nature. You may not know the demons of the feast day, but you know the feast days. You may not know the deepness of baptism, but you know you're supposed to get baptized. Mm -hmm. You may not know the deepness of circumcision, but you know if you're a male, you need to be circumcised. You may not know the deepness of what all going to happen when the Lord come back, but you know you got to be in a place of safety because it's going down. Mm -hmm. And you know if you ain't there, you open season. Satan going to roll you and sift you like wheat. Mm. And the Lord going to give him that. See, here we're going to tell it to you. Because we're walking with Christ here, so we're not, we not going uh, to sugarcoat it. Let's keep it moving. Let me get six. You finished that six? No, I ain't get six yet. Go ahead. He that saith he abideth in him 
ought himself also so to walk, if you even as he walked. You abide and you walk with Christ. A person shouldn't have to test you. They're supposed to see your good works. You a liar. You don't keep your word. You beat up on your girl. <laughs> your girl loud mouth. She cuss people out. She unruly. Your kids thieves. <laughs> Some ain't right. Man. <laughs> Some ain't right, man. I don't know what's going on. <laughs> Just throwing stuff out there. You keep up commotion, confusion, strife, mm. always tail bearing, talking to evil of somebody. Because you ain't supposed to speak evil of no man, whether that's your enemy or not. That's something I'm working on. <laughs> I got to get that together. That just hit me like a ton of bricks. Guilty. Yeah. Let's keep it moving, man. Let's keep it moving. Let's get up out of there before we get in. Where we at, man? <laughs> we ain't going to let them condemn us, man. Where we at, man? We finished that. You finished that sixth verse? Yes, sir. Let's keep it moving. Let's keep it moving. Matthew's 5. Let's see an example of this light. Matthew 5. Go ahead. Matthew 5. Pick it up at verse 3. Say Matthew's 5 and 3. When you get that, brother? Say Matthew's 5 and 3. When you get there, go ahead. Man, we got to, yeah, you got to, it's kind of hot in here. Say Matthew 5, pick it up at verse 3. When you get there, brother. Because the Lord said, walk as children of light, right? This is the walk. Matthew 5 and 3. Go ahead and read. Blessed are the poor in spirit. For theirs is the kingdom of heaven. So your spirit's supposed to be poor about what's going on out here in the world. You like people that like what's going on out here in the world? You better watch them. Mm. Red flag. You shouldn't like what's going on out here in the world. For whoever. Not only in our neighborhoods, but everybody. Somebody is getting hit. Yeah. These people are getting crazy. It seems like the schools ain't even safe no more, are they? Gun law should have been incorporated in Chicago, but it took all these people to die for them to say something. Somebody, mine is gone. Go ahead. Blessed are they that mourn, for they shall be comforted. Because you're mourning for what's going on out here in the world. And the Lord need to comfort us sometimes, because sometimes we start to lose our minds. So you need somebody to comfort and bring you back. Go ahead and read. Blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit the, the earth. The meek shall inherit the what? Earth. Heaven. Earth. Hell. Earth. Oh. <laughs> meek shall inherit the earth. Being meek. You know what being meek is? That's, how the, that's the type of swag the Lord got. He meek. Smooth type of fellow. He just smooth. You ever seen a smooth person? I seen this one dude, he was just so, he was on a bus. I always use the bus, you see a lot of stuff on public transportation. <laughs> Not that I ain't got, I got a vehicle. But just, you know, I, I get on a bus for my job, I get on a bus for free, you know what I mean? <laughs> so I'm gonna utilize that. Well anyway, <laughs> this dude was smooth, man. He had, a, he, first of all, he had a crutch. But his outfit was just so smooth and he moved smooth, even he was hurt. How you move smooth when you hurt? <laughs> I had to compliment the dude. He said, yes, sir. Thanks, man. He had on a hat and everything. He was just a cold looking dude, man. <laughs> <laughs> Meek. He ain't loud. He ain't loud mouth. Go ahead. Blessed are they which do hunger and thirst after righteousness, for they shall be filled. See, you should be hungry and thirsty for righteousness. For righteousness, for righteousness. Read. Blessed are the merciful, for they shall obtain mercy. You got to be merciful on people. So somebody can be merciful to you when you stumble. Or you coming up short. Or you make a mistake. Mm -hmm. My fault. My bad. 
I apologize. But if you ain't been mercy, that fault, that apology won't mean nothing. They going to bring down a hammer. It ain't always, sometimes you got to be soft. Sometimes you got to back it up. Even when you know you got the upper hand on the person. And we exercise this a lot with our kids. They're children. They have foolishness bound in their heart. You got to be cool with them sometimes. Now, I'm not saying let them run the house. I thought you had that peanut butter sandwich for me, Dad. <laughs> I, I didn't tell you to let them run you. <laughs> I'm just saying, man. You ain't had that peanut butter sandwich on deck. <laughs> we gonna have pop. <laughs> but what I am saying is this. You gotta have that mercy. Give me a little room to get it together. Go ahead and read. Eight, blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. The pure in heart, that means what, let me, and especially for sisters, I'm not dwelling on all y'all, but I'm going to point something out. Whatever you done been through with another man and he done did something to you, don't put it on the next man. Don't put that on me. <laughs> I didn't do that to you. Now, all y'all do the same thing. No, I don't. <laughs> And brothers, if y'all been hurt, you didn't get played, <laughs> set up, don't always think all women is bad. Now, I don't like them anyway. They ain't, they ain't no good. They just want your, look, man, cool out. You got to be pure in heart. You can't put what happened and what you experienced on the next person. You got to be pure in heart. You hear a curse word, now you think they're a thug. Mm, blankly blank blase. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Can't do that. Got to be pure in the heart. <laughs> Straight up. Because, and, and we have that problem, don't we? We have that problem. We come in somewhere, they instantly think we own something. Because you in the bar. I'm in the bar because the music is good and I need a drink. <laughs> And I'm sitting next to a young lady. Now I just want this conversation. I'm not trying to talk to you. I got my wedding ring on. That don't mean nothing. I dare you do it. <laughs> you just want conversation. She thinks you're trying to take her home. See, it, sometimes it's so much nonsense that go on. People just got a bad taste in their mouth about people. Where we at? Beginning of nine. Go ahead. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called the children of God. You got to be peaceful, people. I know you be wanting to go upside some people's head. I know you want to be getting even. I know you just want to send it up. And I'm going to tell you, some people crazy. Let me tell you something. Another, 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 another story. I'm on a bus again. <laughs> and I knew that the lady, she had a problem. But she put her leg out in the aisle. You know, she looked like she was drunk. She looked like the elevator didn't go all the way up, you know. Uh, <laughs> but she put her leg out there. Now, it was another lady that got on the bus. She said, you going to move your leg? <laughs> so she snatched her leg back. So this lady, she said it in a smooth, firm way. She said, yeah, yeah. She's like, I'm glad you was because I was going to send this blankety blank up if you didn't move your leg. I'm like, man. I mean, she was going to go in on this woman. And she was, she was going to be delighted to go in on them because peace wasn't on her side, man. She was out for war. Mm. I'm going to send this blankety blank up. You know, I ain't going to put the blankety blank words in there. But you got to seek peace, people. You can't always be ready to fly off the handle. You got to sit back and chill. Go ahead. Blessed are they which are persecuted for righteousness. So sake. you're going to be persecuted for what? Righteousness. Don't sake. get persecuted for something wrong you did. If you're getting persecuted for something wrong you did, you're getting what you deserve. Right. Mm. But when you're persecuted for what? Righteousness sake. Go ahead. For theirs is the kingdom of heaven. That's what you want to get persecuted for. 
because you ain't eating swine. Because you ain't out here on all this wickedness that's going on out here. We get persecuted because we don't keep all these holidays. Some of the holidays that ain't tied in with religious purposes, I, I try to deal with, with the family. But you know that Christmas thing, I ain't rolling like that. No, sir. I'm, I don't like scary movies, so I'm definitely not into Halloween. <laughs> <laughs> that devil, I, I never did like that Ouija board and that devil in call. I never did like that. When I was a kid, man, that'd keep me up for hours. <laughs> I'm glad I had a lot of brothers and sisters because I'm going to sleep with one of them. Because <laughs> I wouldn't get no rest. <laughs> I wasn't, man, that, that, that Easter thing, man. It was kind of fun sometime, wasn't it? <laughs> that, that Easter egg hunt thing, you was used to like that, didn't you? <laughs> that chocolate. That's why, why we participate in it, because we try to find some fun out of it. Other than that, we can care less about that stuff. I just like used to get a new suit. I get a fresh suit. Be in a picture with him. Never mind. <laughs> what we at, man? Beginning of 11. Go ahead, finish it. Blessed are ye when men shall revile you and persecute you and shall say all manner of evil against you falsely for my sake. They're going to do that for the Lord's sake. They're going to say you're a hypocrite, you're lying, you don't know what you're talking about. Israel, y'all cope, blase this, this and that. You do this, you do that, you do this. They're going to do that. And you can read everything out the Bible. You don't talk against nobody. We don't teach hate. We try to bring.